guys, I'm Laura Vitale and in this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, we are starting off early fall. We're just a week or so before the first official day of fall, but I figured we would ease into it with a soup because if you ask me, this is controversial, but I'm just going to say it. Soup season is far more superior than pumpkin spice season. There, I said it. Come for me if you must. I stand on that hill that soup season is the best part of fall. Um, we talked about it on Instagram. I asked for your suggestions for soup that you want to see and tomato bisque was at the very top. So that's the first one I'm going to make. Um, it's so good and so delicious, but so simple. I can't wait to show it. I'm going to have, I'm going to do this with fresh tomatoes. It works just as well with a 28 ounce can of like plum tomatoes, Italian plum tomatoes, it works just as well. But since we are at the tail end of summer where tomatoes are still coming in, especially in the garden, I'm gonna go ahead and just use fresh tomatoes. I've got the oven preheated to 425. I have a couple of pounds of tomatoes, some grape tomatoes. They're not even the freshest because they were in the fridge, but they are perfect. And when you don't have super fresh tomatoes or out of season tomatoes that don't have much flavor, this is a great thing to do with them. And then I have a few really beautiful ripe ripe tomatoes. I'm just gonna go ahead and give them a rife, a rife, <laughs> a rough chop and add them to a small roasting pan. Now you notice that for the amount of tomatoes that I'm using, which is just a couple pounds, I'm not using a really big, large baking sheet. And that's because when you're using such a small amount, if you were to use a baking sheet, the edges would burn, any sugar that comes out of the tomatoes and caramelizes would burn. But instead, I want the pan to collect as many juices as possible because that will equal flavor. Go ahead and add all of those to your pan. Add some olive oil a good pinch of salt. These tomatoes smell incredible. And then just a little bit of balsamic vinegar. This is balsamic vinegar, it's not red wine. <laughs> Although the bottle does look like it. it's really good balsamic vinegar that I got as a gift from a friend. And I particularly love that it looks like it's in a wine bottle. Give it a stir, it's all you need. And you're just gonna go ahead and pop this in a mm, 425 oven for about 20 minutes or so. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up some celery, onion, and garlic and get that sauteing. Mm. To a nice large stock pot, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my onion, garlic, and celery with a little bit of olive oil and some butter. I'm not looking for these to develop a ton of color, but I am looking for them to cook down, become nice and translucent really just sort of become sweet and yummy. Add a pinch of salt to get those flavors to come out. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wait for that to happen. I'm not in any rush because the tomatoes are in the oven, so there's not a whole lot I can do anyway. However, we are going to talk about the ingredient that makes this tomato bisque the best, most velvety tomato bisque of your life. And that is, good old friend, the spud. The spud is gonna add the most delicious texture to this. It's gonna give it that velvety bisque. It's not just a soup that's been blended with a little bit of cream. It's got body, it's got texture, it's got velvetiness, it has movement. It's got all the things that make, in my opinion, for a really good tomato bisque. I don't need to dice it right now, otherwise it's gonna oxidize and I have to soak it in water and I don't feel like doing that. I will uh, peel it and dice it very soon when I need it. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and babysit my veggies. Nearly ready. So we're just gonna go ahead and chop up our potato. I just slice it, dice it, slice it, whatever. Add it to your pot. Look how beautiful these veggies look. I wanted to show you. They've developed some color, but they're really sort of cooked down into golden deliciousness. Don't take them too far because I don't want you to burn that garlic because when you burn garlic, you gotta start all over again because it becomes really bitter. And then we're gonna add chicken stock. Get that right in, beautiful. A little bunch of thyme. I just added just like this and the little 
thyme leaves will fall right off. Italian seasoning. That's it. That's all you're gonna need and let that cook for however long it takes for the tomatoes to cook and for the potato to become really nice and tender. Shouldn't take any more than about 15, 20 minutes. And then when the tomatoes are done, we will unite. We will bring a brisk to life. <laughs> tomatoes are out of the oven. They look fantastic. They smell fantastic. The soup base is ready. The potato is nice and tender. I'm just gonna go ahead and take my tomatoes with all the juices and all the goodness add it right in and this just needs to simmer together not for very long like maybe 15 minutes or so not even let's say 10 minutes while that happens we're gonna make some giant parmesan I call them croutons um, to go with because it's just so delicious take some slices of baguette the oven is still on so you're gonna go ahead and just drizzle some olive oil on both sides and you're gonna add this into the oven until it becomes a beautiful golden brown color not too golden brown because you'll see we're gonna pop them back into the oven so just pop them in until lightly golden and by that point the soup should be just about ready all right, it is time to blend. It's still really hot, so just, you know, be careful. Get it all out in here. You can leave some of it behind if you like a chunky bisque. That's up to you. I kind of don't. I like a pretty smooth bisque. And I am a texture person, but the texture is going to come from those delicious, giant, what I'm calling garlic croutons. Gorgeously, gorgeously smooth. Add that back in the pot. Make sure you don't leave any bits left in that blender. And then to it, you're gonna add a splash of heavy cream. If you wanted to make this like, you know, Whole30 friendly or paleo friendly, substitute the cream with a little bit of coconut milk and it would be really delicious and wonderful. Just keep that on simmer. Tastes fantastic. I've already given a taste test. I'm gonna put a little bit of basil in there as it just stays at a nice simmering temp. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead, grab the little crostini, the little pieces of bread out of the oven because now that there are golden brown around the edges, we're gonna take this opportunity to infuse a little bit of garlic flavor. You take a piece of garlic, you rub it all around. Careful, it's really hot. And the second that that garlic hits the heat, it releases, oopsies, all its flavor. I put them all together nice and close and then sprinkle them with some parmigiano, like that. And then they go back into the oven until the cheese and the top is really beautiful golden brown. And that's pretty much it. Super easy and super simple, but every soup, especially bisque, needs some kind of crunchy topper. So that's it. The bisque is ready. The croutons are gonna be ready. I call them croutons, but they're really crostini. Then we serve up. Look at how gorgeous and velvety this is. It's due to the spud. You know I love a spud. You know how I feel about potatoes. So that should be of no surprise to you, but it really does add something so special. Look at these, look at the cheese that gets all crusty. Oh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, a little hot pepper flake because I like it and I need black pepper. And that is the most delicious way I can think of to start my favorite season of the year, soup season, but also autumn and fall. And with it, we're gonna celebrate all of the things that make it so wonderful. We're gonna celebrate the one pot wonders, the cozy dinners, the warm drinks. We're gonna have live events where we chat all about the things that we love and we look forward to the, around this time of the year. It is my favorite season. I'm a summertime girl, but really, Deep down in here, I'm a 
fall girl. I got married in the fall. I got married in October. I love everything about the month of October and November. And then we kick off the holiday season. It's just heavenly. And look at this. Look at this. We got the crunchy bit. We've got the velvety smooth. It's going to be fantastic. Just give me a minute. It's going to be very hot. That is so perfect. It is unbelievable. It's delicious and velvety and smooth. Sweet but not too sweet. Perfect tomato bisque. Go to lauraandthekitchen.com for the written recipe. Hope you enjoy spending time with me. I will see you in the next one. Bye.